So I was at a flea market the other day and I found this. I suspect it's a 1970s era um, kit. It's called Logic Clock. Um, it's a model LC101. I have not been able to find any information on it. Um, I think on the net I found one reference to it in a 1971 um, audio magazine. So, um, I bought it for three bucks. I thought it was pretty cool. It uses uh, Numatron tubes. But it has a slight issue and here we see the seconds are counting up and it's about ready to cycle. But it doesn't advance the minutes. No clue why. In the back, all there is is these buttons here. And this is for hours. And this is for, um, both of these are for minutes. So this is the, the one minute mark and this is for the 10 minute marks. This switch here, I can't really tell what it's for, uh, except for stopping the clock. When you press that switch down, the clock just freezes. I'm able to adjust the time, whether it's up or down, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I can adjust the time whether the switch is up or down, and it just freezes the clock. So, the two main issues with this is, for one, it's not advancing after the seconds reach 59. And it just appears to be a little wonky when trying to set the time. So, I think we're going to take this apart and see if there's anything in there that we can see corroded or needs to be cleaned. Or if there's bad capacitors or just bad solder joints.
six months later, and I've just recently got around to fixing this clock. Um, off camera, of course. So I want to go ahead and explain what I've done. This capacitor um, was missing when I got this device. I assume it must have fallen off somewhere in its lifetime and probably fell off the front because there's no, it's not completely enclosed in the front. Um, I don't know if it was originally or not with a piece of smoke glass or something. What I did is I took this resistor off of here, moved to here, all three of these are the same value. I just added a replacement to this. I wanted to keep whatever purpose this is, um, I wanted to be sure they were the same between these two capacitors. This one seemed to work fine, so this is where my I assume my problem area was. After doing that, there was no change. Um, the clock still functioned the same where it would reach 59 seconds and not index the one minute. I then decided to examine all the traces underneath to make sure there was no bad solder joints or anything. I couldn't find anything wrong with it. I don't have a schematic for this but I was able to find the chip pinouts and did the best I could to trace them around. I just couldn't see anything wrong. So my thinking was that the chip still seems to work fine if I use the switch. It does index the, the one minute. Um, so I, I'm assuming that there was nothing wrong with the chip and that it had to have been some other external component so I started testing all the resistors. I tested the diodes. I had to pull you know, a leg out of circuit and test them. And then tested these capacitors. And I found C4, which is the number of this capacitor, was posting half its value. Um, the other two were, were pretty off too, but not as bad. So. I went ahead and replaced these three and as soon as I put power to it the, the minute started working just fine. And that was pretty much the only problem was this capacitor had drifted so far out of out of uh, tolerance. I personally never had encountered a bad ceramic. I, I guess I was under the thinking that they don't really go bad or change in value much but that certainly didn't hold true as all three of them were pretty far off. I'm not quite sure what C4's function is in the circuit. I suspect it might be bleeding off the voltage that gets built up on the leg. Um, I guess if the value was way off it, it wasn't allowing it to bleed off. Or I was fortunate to find a website called tubeclockdb.com um, which appears to be a great resource for these kinds of clocks. Uh, there appears to be quite a following of people who who build these clocks out of kits or out of vintage parts um, using, in my case, pneumatron tubes or vacuum fluorescent display tubes, uh, Nixie tubes. Um, they're all pretty amazing clocks. Um, and an administrator there T.Y. Eberfest uh, commented on some things that he noticed about this clock. He noted that the 7400 series ICs, the day codes were 1971. He also mentioned that the gold pins may be an indication of a military spec. He also mentioned the abnormally large ground and power planes. The four diodes laid out in a diamond shape. Uh, there was no bridge modules back in 1971. And the solid carbon compound resistors, not carbon film. So here we are, all put back together. Working and looking splendid. Pretty much, there was just a lot of dirt on the case. It cleaned up really nice. The corrosion on the front came off with some Scotch-Brite. I 
tried my best not to get anywhere close to the original lettering. Take a look at that. If anyone knows anything about this clock, uh, as far as the maker or, or maybe a precise year or whether or not it was a kit, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this nice vintage clock. And here it is proudly sitting next to my Marantz amplifier.